good morning. Now I got the mic on. How's everybody doing? Awesome. Guess who's back? <laughs> it's nice to be back, y'all. Uh, this song, Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord, it really spoke to me, rather. I guess God really did have a chance to open the eyes of my heart personally while I was down in Belize. Um, I'll speak a little bit more a little bit later. But right now it's time to stand up and worship. Everybody, let's get to our feet. So this morning, I just pray that Jesus can open the eyes of everybody's heart here. Pray that we're open to what he has for us this morning. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. There it is. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Sing it from your heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Keep it going. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Sing it one more time. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see I want to see you, to see, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love, this wisdom, holy, 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 to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour Pour out your power in love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart.
and sing it out. my home. 
time with the Lord right now and just remind yourself of the Lord. God, you won't fail. said would you go around and find somebody you know or don't know and uh, greet them and welcome
we are navigating some logistics. RJ and Carolina's not here, and um, uh, they are on their honeymoon, so... Uh, <laughs> I didn't talk to them long, but I messaged them the other day, and they look like they're having a great time, and so we're blessed by that. I believe they'll be back Wednesday or Thursday, so, and uh, we have some things back in the back that hopefully we'll have ready for you, um, because they're not here to get it set up for us, and so I do have some announcements for you. Robin is in the nursery, so you have me for announcements this morning, so... Uh, um, visitors, if you are a first-time visitor, just uh, hopefully we got a card to you. If not, if we haven't got a packet for you, just raise your hand. I promise I won't embarrass you any more than that. If you would fill that out, turn it into the info table. We have a small gift for you. If you need translation, uh, it is out at the info table. Sandra's back there. She'll set you up. And we know there's a few with, uh, needing translation this morning. And uh, offering, if you need an offering, uh, the, the envelope, the ushers are coming around and we'll get you those right now. You're so quiet. You're so intimidating when you're quiet. Ch change for missions. So there's a little box back there on the wall. If you want to pick up one of those boxes, uh, put all your change in it, turn it in when they're full, and all of those proceeds go directly to missions. And so... Speaking of change for missions, if you have one of the baby bottles, we took 40 of them. We have about 20 turned in. So if you have a baby bottle, turn it in for me. Um, I would appreciate it. We'll, we'll sew it into the Pregnancy Help Center and as they're doing a good work. Uh, next, August 7th, which is next Sunday. Everybody say next Sunday. We're doing a baby dedication, so if you have a baby that's never been dedicated and interested, reach out to me, talk to me about that. We'll be doing a baby dedication. Youth this Wednesday is at 6.30. Woo-hoo! And so RJ's still going to be gone. I, I wonder if Kaylee's going to be preaching. I'm not sure. I don't see her, so I can't ask her um, if she's preaching. Youth at 6.30 on Wednesdays. And what else? Men's work day. Men, day. it's in two Saturdays. Not next Saturday, but the next Saturday. If you are willing to help, we would appreciate it. It's going to be a great time of some bonding of some men. And it's really not a whole lot of work. About an hour's worth. We just need to do a lot of touch-up and painting. It's been We've been in this building a year. And, and some scratches in the foyer and everything. And so we just need to get that taken care of. We will serve you breakfast. And uh, so QR code sign up, and we would greatly appreciate it. Back to school prayer is in two Sundays, not next Sunday, but the next Sunday. We're excited about that. Bring whether you're a teacher, work for the school district, or a student, we ask that you would come and we will pray over you. A few of you are going off to college. And so. Um, we look forward to praying over you. And then we have the cluster party. All right. So if you don't know anything about the cluster party, it is a going to be a great time. So you got to buy your 50s uh, skirts, your poodle skirts, your your polka dot uh, dresses for Paula Don. And uh, Don's going to wear his, um, his, his black jacket, and he's going to slick his hair all the way back. And... Um, and we're going to have a great time together. And so last year, uh, the Tomball campus and us joined uh, forces in this room and just had a blast. And it's the highlight. Our grow teams will advertise all, uh, all our grow teams will relaunch um, right after that. And so we have nine of them, and we'll share those with you. But I hope you come to the cluster party. It's just going to be a great time. We've been really working on it. It's going to be super, super fun. Last thing, almost last thing, Go 101. Go 101 is a discipleship class that leads to our membership. That will happen uh, in about four weeks. If you have never gone through Go 101, sign up using the QR code, and we would greatly appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll have about nine uh, new students uh, going through it. And so, and one area that we need help is if you are a lady and are willing to work in the nursery on a rotation, my wife could love, will absolutely love you. And so, my daughter-in-law shaking her head, so my other Robin will, will love you as well. And so, um, but uh, yeah, Robin could uh, use more volunteers, so if you're interested, go talk to her, and we would greatly appreciate that. So there's four ways to give. 
you can give the old-fashioned way uh, in person, like when they pass the, the baskets around. Those baskets were made in Belize, by the way. So we'll talk a little bit about Belize in a few minutes. Uh, online, uh, that's the easiest way for me to give texts, or the old-fashioned way also is snail mail, and you can give that way. And we appreciate your tithes and offerings. So shall we pray? Y'all are solid, super glad. Thank you, Cynthia. I'm, I'm waiting for someone. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to be givers. We thank you to sow our tithes and our offerings to you. God, would you further the kingdom of God, Father? We praise you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Michael, if you could turn me up in my mic just a little bit. All right, so not all of our Belize team is here. Uh, Fred is in the Tomball campus, and Robin and Erica are in the nursery this morning. But could our Belize crew that is in the house, uh, 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 Brian and Natalie are out, uh, 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 not feeling well today, so they, they are not here with us. So we're missing a few, but come on up, come on up. Come on up, Tori. We had 18, including myself, um, go. We had a great, great team. And uh, we just want to share. Hopefully, we have some slides. Did we ever figure out where those slides were? All righty. So, uh, yes. Um, I don't know if we're going to have any slides for you this morning. We have a few testimonies that I'd like to share with you. And... Abriana. Oh, I got it. So, whoa, here we go. So, um, that's us. So, they're going to scroll for me. Um, this is in Miami Mopan. Yeah, y'all may want to stop it. So, this is in Miami Mopan. This was uh, our Saturday adventure. Miami Mopan is exactly that. It is a Mayan village. And uh, when I lived in Belize, so we built this home. It is one of the very few homes with indoor plumbing. And so, which is a blessing to us uh, uh, spoiled Americans and not, not having to go in an outhouse. And you know something cool? The, the owner of this house is named Feliciano. He's a security guard. And when he's working on Sunday, he tells us he uh, he streams Go Church, so he's watching Go Church in uh, in at the university campus. Go ahead to the next one. All right, just some more pictures of Maya Mopan. Go ahead. All right, we went door to door, um, praying for people, inviting them to church. That's Abriana playing with a uh, tarantula that we found under a rock somewhere. There's Brian with his Rasta hat on. Feliciano, this is Feliciano and Rosé. Uh, 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 Harry, can you go back? Yeah, if y'all could just keep it there, that'd be great. All right. Um, uh, Josefa is is the wife's name. Rosita is in the middle. They're, that's their oldest child, first one to graduate from high school, and first one to get her teacher's degree, and is uh, doing an amazing job. So a teacher there can can teach at, with an associate, and she's going on uh, working on her bachelor's degree right now. She's working in a Christian school. It's really, really cool. Go ahead. We did a water outreach. Water outreach is exactly that. We buy 500 waters. We stand on the side of the road. We pass out waters at the, they call it a sleeping policeman because a speed bump will always catch you. And uh, uh, the policeman not around, the speed bump will catch you. And it was a great time. So go ahead, next. Uh, more water. It was raining. We wish we had some of that rain right here in uh, Houston. Uh, this was our morning devotionals uh, in our hotel room, and uh, it was powerful. This is uh, LifeNet Church, the church I planted about 11 years ago, and so our team mixed with their team and led worship. It was a powerful time. All right, there's me introducing all my kids, except for my sons, not in that picture. That's uh, Children's Church. They had 63 kids in Children's Church. So, yeah, they had about 235 in service there. Uh, Terrence and Andrea just moved from Belize to Detroit as missionaries. Um, that's them. They were back in town. This is Kudzai's children, uh, Grayson over here, and Niall. 
And Tanya, that's the pastor's wife. All right, Yasha home. We had an amazing time. Most of y'all know Elizabeth, and she's doing a great, great, great work. We were co cooking supper for her that night, lasagna, which that's what she had asked for us to cook. We blessed them with a bunch of groceries. Our ladies were cooking. Our men were out in the yard and cutting things down, getting stung by bees, all that good stuff. There's Robin and Abriana. Yeah, there's the work going on. Yeah, that's Brian getting stung by bees right there. <laughs> All right, that's Yasha home, and they're fixing to add another girl, uh, Lillian, um, which is super, super. Can you just stop there? Fanny in the middle. Uh, I've known Fanny of Annie a long time. Chloe, I've known Chloe. I know Dulcie's story. Um, it's been a real journey. So glad she's there. And so just wonderful, wonderful girls. Uh, um, Sasha is right here on the right beside Elizabeth. She'll be going to a Bible school in Alvin, Texas this year. And, uh, and Dulcie's working on her associates in accounting and should be getting a job and hopefully trying to come to the States to finish her degree. And so Tiffany's one of the house moms. Tanya, which is Pastor Kudzai's sister-in-law, is who Tiffany is. Go ahead to the next one. That's the whole team. What y'all don't see there is they have two, one pit bull and one other dog in the middle of us, and they started fighting in the middle of us. And so, and just right after that picture was taken, there is chaos going on, trying to not get bit. And so, uh, um, this is the former mayor of Belmapan, uh, Khalid Belayo. I led him to Jesus and discipled him for uh, several years while I was there. Uh, he is running for area rep, which is kind of like a congressman. I have always, so he, his plan is to be an area rep for three years and get out of politics because that's not his cup of tea. I believe this man could be prime minister of the nation, and um, I believe uh, um, uh, the nation needs him, and so he's still young. He's still got a ways to go, but uh, we're so glad. We got to see his house, which was an, an amazing house. Go ahead. That's the team at his house. Go ahead, next. So one thing about the team before I go there, they saw the families that we reached at LifeNet Church that literally live in, in uh, thatched houses with dirt floors all the way up to the former mayor's house, which is Taj Mahal. And so, uh, and so a very gamut of, of who we minister to in Belize. That's Robin's doing a ladies uh, meeting on Tuesday night. That's the lady singing for the ladies. All right, that Sunday morning picture of the team. All right, that's it. So, uh, Abriana, we're going to share a couple of testimonies. Abriana. Okay. Um, so, I guess I've always heard of like missionaries going and they do things and they like spread the word of God, but I never really realized what an impact that missionaries have on their community. And what really stood out to me during our trip was when we went to the Mayan village and like we saw this whole family and they were like, we love Pastor Lee, like he taught us about God and stuff like that. And then this one lady was talking to my dad and I and she said how like Pastor Lee literally changed her life when he taught her that she could pray, she could know God like on her own and that she could like share his word and stuff like that. And so like this family is now lights in their community and it was because Pastor Lee and his family decided to be like they lived out their calling of missionaries and it just really stood out to me how much of an impact they had and we can have that same impact in our community but yeah do I go ahead okay <clears throat> um, so I think it was uh, Monday Monday? Yeah, it was Monday, like, afternoon, and George, Abrana, my dad, and I, we had just been practicing some worship songs for um, the, because we are going to be on, like, the television station the next morning, so we were just, like, practicing our songs, and uh, we were outside, just in front of, like, the bed and breakfast, and this guy walked by, and he told us he was uh, the cousin of the people who owned the, um, 
bed and breakfast, and we just asked him if he wanted to stay and worship with us a bit, and at first he seemed kind of hesitant to say yes, and he's like, sure. So then he stayed, and then after we were done, you could just tell, like, on his face that he just, like, was touched, and it was so cool because I've never seen, like, myself really do that, you know, like, impact someone. And he was just telling us how he had, like, stepped away from the church for a while because, like, after COVID, and he hadn't really started going back. And he just, he looked like he was just impacted. And I'm hoping he'll start going back to church. But that was really cool. It just stood out to me how, like, we had an impact on him. So. I definitely felt like uh, Papa coming back home, and so you walk into the grocery store. I know people, and like ever, I, we even went zip lining, and the zip liners like, "Hey, it's been a long time since I've seen you," and I'm like, "Oh, you know me," and so uh, I definitely feel that role of a uh, uh, Papa coming home to encourage uh, my kids, and and so it's it's neat to be there. It reminded me how much I love Belize. Uh, George was on national television with about seven of us. I did introduce him as a single man. I, I, uh, I did uh, withhold so much that I could have said, I almost said five, 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 two, four, two, four. And so, but I, I held back. I just said he was single. And so, um, but we had a great time at the television station. Uh, normally they give us about five minutes. So we go on, sing a song, say, hey, we're in Belize, loving on people. They give us 45 minutes. And so it was just an amazing time. So George. Yeah, so um, I could probably go on and on and on about the six days I was there. Um, and uh, yeah, I had to take some notes because the whole, since I've been back, my mind has just been racing and, and just absorbing everything that I experienced there. I just, I don't want to let go of it. And uh, so I took some notes. I'm just going to go ahead and go through these. <laughs> I got a taste of what it's like to be pastorly, and there's a pun in there somewhere, so. I, I lived a daily routine of serving people. Uh, I physically saw in front of my eyes what it was like to, tire, to serve as tirelessly as I could from waking until going to bed. It wore me out, y'all. <laughs> it wore me out. Um, me too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, and like we were singing earlier, God really and truly did uh, open the eyes of my heart. Um, I was able to feel things that I haven't felt in a long time and, uh, and see things that I haven't seen before. Um, and really just to see a servant's heart modeled right before my eyes every single day. That's what I mean when I got to see what it was like to be pastorally. He does this every single day. Uh, here in the States, we have everything. And this land right here that we live in, Katy, Texas, the Houston area, Texas in general, this is one of the most blessed places in the world. We have everything we need or want, and some things we don't need at our fingertips and because of that I mean I kind of forgot what it was like to have a servant's heart I don't want for anything I don't you know even when I complain I shouldn't be complaining we have everything we have more than everything we have abundance we are blessed nobody in this room should forget that nobody I never uh, I've never seen it more clearly than the first day I was back here. And I got into the same old routine that I always get in. And it, it felt strange. And that's why I don't want to let go of what I experienced in Belize. Um, everything I felt, everything I saw. I just, I don't, I want to hang on to it for the rest of my life. And I realized I don't have to be in Belize to serve. I have people here in the church, I have people at home, I have people at work that I can serve. Um, and so I'm just super thankful for, for being able to go. My second time, it took two times, <laughs> but it, it's just been, again, I just don't want to let go of this. If anybody, if you have an inkling, even if you can't afford it, go. 
Amén. <laughs> Thanks, y'all. Thanks for listening. Um, amen. We, we, um, the team asked when we're going back, and our plans are to go back in two years because next year we hope to go to Detroit and work with Terrence and Andrea. And the team said, how come we can't do two? So we're working on what that looks like. To say, you know, we don't want to take uh, a team to Belize of, of you know, uh, five people that not quite as, uh, so a team of 18, 15 is a perfect size. And it's good enough for the vans, and two, two vans. And uh, so we really want to make sure we can handle both, but we are considering that. So not everybody's going to share, but Susie has um, a testimony as well. As George was saying, um, you know, if you don't have the funds to go, just go. I mean, I didn't know how it was going to go, but I said, you know what, I'm going to do this. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I've never done something like this before. God will make a way, and he did. And I am so blessed that I went, and I just got to see how, you know, Pastor Lee and the family, you know, how they minister to everyone and how they're so loved. And I'm like, how do I do that? So I kept asking God, you know, how do I do that? And it was just clear, just give love, just show love to them, and they, they will receive it. And you'll never know how blessed you're blessing to them as you are, you know, vice versa. And so, <laughs> um, but I do remember um, when I was at the women's group, I was, um, Robin asked for us to come out and pray. I don't do that. I was freaking out <laughs> while I was standing there. But before that, God gave me a vision. And I hadn't had that in a long time. He gave me a vision of this lady and she was struggling. And she was in pain. And it just so happened that same lady came up to me. And she told me her story. And I just I just felt something come over me. And I just started praying. And that was just an amazing feeling. Amen. Dagny, we didn't ask you to share. But you had shared our last, last day in Belize was on Wednesday. And... Um, uh, we were we did our morning devotionals. Those morning devotionals with the team were just powerful, guys. I think I boohooed the whole time, every single one of them. It was just the presence of the Lord and just, uh, why do you go on a Belize trip? Let me tell you why. Because you're going to get more out of this than you're going to pour in. God's going to transform your life. But one thing I asked the question to the team, I said, how do we take this home? And you said something very, very profound. Do you remember what it was? said a lot of things. Um, I said our mission field is here. Our mission field is outside of our door. It is outside of our front door. It is outside your bedroom door because it could be your family that you're, um, you know, pouring light into, right, or filling. And, and it's, it's where you work. It is stepping out every day. Um, it's, for me, it's going in and reaching out to the children that I work with. Um, it's just, it's here. It's in this building. It's, it's, you don't have to get on an airplane and fly away because it's right here. This is our mission field. Also, you had said that we need to, uh, something to the fact that we need to be reminded of the giftings in us to be used by God. And so I thought that was powerful. And so um, Sean was highly impacted by this trip. So glad that he came. The whole team, my son here, was his first time back. Uh, they went on a cruise, but they didn't really get to spend time with people. It was such a blessing because Josh left after three years of being on the mission field, and that was the most devastating season of our lives. I was being sought after by a hitman, uh, uh, fighting tooth and nail, uh, just the, the enemy's hands when I was there. And Joshua left during that time. So it was such a blessing for him to go back and see the the building uh, completed and see the people and see the victory of the fight. Sometimes when you're in the middle of the fight, you're like, what in the world's going on? And I get to go back and see the victory of the fight, that it was all worth it, you know? And uh, we're, we, we, I'll end with this. We, I planted a church believing that God didn't call them to influence a city, but to touch a nation. And we're beginning to see that because 
The Belizean Charismatic Pentecostal Church tends to be legalistic. It tends to be uh, not only in dress code, but in actions. And we just kind of brought a little bit different flavor of, 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 of our DNA to what God had called us to do. And it was very attractive to the people. And so it just, it just blew up. And it's truly impacting the nation. It's so cool to watch God move in a powerful way. So would you give this team a, a huge clap? Yeah, y'all can go back. <laughs> Michael, I still don't can't hear myself that well. Um Yes, a powerful time. I hope you'll go with us next time. Uh, and if we can have 15 going to Belize and 15 going to Detroit, uh, which would be powerful in Detroit, uh, would be a very, very, very different uh, focus. Uh, it, we will be going to Ham. Tramick, uh, Michigan, which is surrounded by um, Detroit, and it's 70 or 80 percent Muslim. And so first city in the United States to have a Muslim city council and a Muslim mayor. And so a very different world, and we need to pray for Terrence and Andrea. We need to pray for one thing that they asked for prayer on Sunday in Belize was that they would meet friends because Belize is a city of 20,000 people and everybody knows everybody and we have some dear friends and now they're going into a city of Detroit, I don't know, 2 million people and they just don't have a lot of relationships and it's hard on them to be there and to begin to uh, that, that fight through. So be praying for Terrence and Andrea and we will be scheduling something and so before I preach, uh, we have a lot going on this morning before I preach, and so uh, Wayne and Jody, Bob and Martha, would y'all come up here? <clears throat> so Bob and Martha, over the next two weeks, we may see them again next week, we're just not sure, but they are on their way moving to be closer to their kids in Colorado. And so, and Wayne and Jody, for y'all, no, no, he's my brother, I'm the handsome one, and... Uh, uh, um, Wayne and I always say who's older and most people say I'm older and he's definitely older he's close to 60 and uh, uh, um, that's right Wayne right like oh it's not not close okay um, but uh, anyway they're moving to Cleveland Texas or really outside of Cleveland Texas uh, uh, to their new house uh, on in on Artesian Lakes you need to go by and visit them because it's a beautiful house feed the alligators no don't feed the alligators it's illegal and um, uh, don't get a stick that long and feed them with a piece of bread don't do that we don't have video of that me doing that ever um, we don't but if you want to see it on I, my iPhone I can show it to you after church um, but uh, we are going to miss them. Uh, both of these families have been with us uh, since day one uh, of Go Church in the planning of, of Go Church and just been huge servants in so many, many ways. And so they're both going to leave huge holes. That means y'all got to step up to the plate. And uh, um, But uh, we are going to miss them. So today we're going to have a reception afterwards. And there are cookies out there. There's some water out there. There's also, I wish I had one in my hand, there's these white hearts. And, and so there is a tray for, well, I think they're all together. But there are two, I don't know what you call them, platforms um, that you stick the heart, you stick the heart right in the middle, and you stab them right in the heart, and uh, um, but you can write a letter to them, and there's some black markers there, write a letter to them, and stab them right in the heart with that stick, and so let them know how much you're going to miss them, and there's one for uh, Bob and Martha, and there's one for Wayne and Jody. Um, to, to do after that. So please take the time to, to write those out. And can you just stretch your hands out and for us to pray over them, pray for their future, pray the church home that they will find. And we just want to bless them out well. Amen? That doesn't mean anybody else can move. You're not allowed. And so <laughs> I'm joking. Father, we pray for this couple. We pray for Bob and Martha, God. Father, we love them. We love their servant's heart and all the ways that they've served, ushering and greeting and translation and so many different areas, Father. Father, would you use them in where they're supposed to be going, plug them into a church, uh, cause them to serve their children, Father. Father, we thank you for that. We bless them, God. 
Father, we're going to miss them, but Father, we bless them forth. And Father, we pray for Wayne and Jody as they leave. We ask that as they find a church, Father, a place to serve, that Father, it would be healthy for them and healthy for the church. And Father, we praise you for that. We ask that this home would be a place of ministry. People would come and just uh, get away and relax. And Father, we we bless them, Father. Thank you for all the things that they've done, Father, in front of people and a lot behind the scenes, God. And Father, we're going to miss them here in Jesus' name. Amen. So Wayne and Jody are going to be here for about two more weeks, right? And so they're not, it's not their last Sunday, but uh, if you might miss next Sunday, you may want to tell them goodbye. And so they'll come back and visit. Their brother still lives here. And uh, um, so, so yes, yes, afterwards, they're going to be out there. Definitely give them a hug. Fill out the, the card for them. Thank you so much. You, huh? Don't stab them in the heart. All right, kindness number three, I'm preaching on our neighbors today. So if this is your first time to be here in about three weeks, I've been preaching a three-week or four-week series. Last Sunday I wasn't here, so we didn't go on kindness, but this is sermon number three on kindness. It is a very practical message. We really seek to be uh, not only hearers of the word, but doers of the word. So I have an assignment that I hope each one of you will fulfill this week week as we serve our neighbors, and we'll talk about, about that a little bit more. If you do something this week to serve your neighbor and you have a testimony, please message me, text me, email me, however you want to do it. Let me know. I'd love to celebrate those testimonies. Uh, I've, I've received a few, and, uh, and next week we'll share some of those. And so if that's you, please don't tell me on Sunday morning. Tell me before the week so I can prepare for it. So a little recap of the past two messages. So Proverbs chapter 3, 3 and 4 is kind of our focus scripture. This is what it says. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your hearts. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. It's saying keep kindness as a part of of your character, your values. Keep it deep within your heart. May we be the kings of kindness. Anybody know our word that we're creating a cultural movement? It's boon. Everybody say boon. That sounds like you are saying boo. Um, sounded pretty bad. But anyway, boon means uh, doing something that is beneficial. Boon. Never heard that word before, but it is our word now. Pastor by the name of Tim McCarthy defined kindness this way, a costly and unconditional commitment to be a blessing to everyone and everything. Our kindness will lead into our outreach uh, initiative, which I will spend quite a bit of time this morning talking about. So, the first two sermons on kindness. Can anybody tell me what the first sermon on kindness, the focus was? Good job, man. Spouses. How many of y'all blessed your spouses? Okay, a few of y'all. All right, all right. Um, uh, what was the next one? Our children. How many blessed your children? Okay, I, 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 I bless my children. Let me tell you what I did. So my girls, uh, my son is married, so he doesn't live with me, but my girls mow the lawn with me, and I am a stickler on how I mow. And so my girls hate mowing with me because I'm probably not the nicest of boss when it comes to mowing. What did you do then? Come on. And so um, on Sunday afternoon, I went out in about 100 and. 25 degrees, and I said, my gift to you is I'm going to do the whole yard myself. Y'all don't have to help me at all. Erica started crying. She was so joyful. <laughs> True story. And they went out and bought me a Dairy Queen malt, which is my favorite vanilla malt, by the way. And uh, um, they went out and bought me just to bless me back. But uh, that was one of my gifts that I did for my children on that sermon. Kindness to our neighbors. Everybody has a neighbor. I'm talking about those that are to your right or to your left. So how many of y'all have a neighbor to your right or to your left? 
almost everybody, okay? These, this is my house right here. Uh, this lady right over here is named Tanya, and this family right over here is named Devin and Nate, and both are great families, and I plan on blessing both of them this week. That's my house right now. That's who I'm talking about. Your neighbors, if you want to bless the families in front of you, you can bless them too, but I'm talking about your neighbors directly, literally your neighbors. So let me ask you a couple of questions. How many of y'all know both of your neighbors' names to the right and to the left? Good job. That's a better hand than y'all actually blessing your spouses, and so that was good. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> How many of you have ever been in, uh, ever invited one of your neighbors to church? Okay, a few of y'all. How many have ever done something kind for your neighbor? All right. Well, if you haven't ever th done anything kind to your neighbor, this week is the week. Matthew chapter 22, 37 through 40 says this. Y'all know this scripture well. Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all. Everybody say all. All the law and the prophets. One of those scriptures that love that neighbor comes out of Leviticus chapter 19, 18. It's first mentioned in that text to love your neighbor. Uh, Leviticus is called Leviticus because it's directed or written to the Levites or the priestly class of the Jewish people. Uh, Levitic Leviticus is a book of God's laws. My opening devotional or, or commentary of each chapter in my Bible says that it is God's guidebook for his newly redeemed people. Written by Moses, one of the first five books of the Bible by the Jews is called the Torah. Uh, in Greek, it's called the Pentateuch. Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 also mentions the first part of this verse, and it is the last of the five books of the Torah. It's written by Moses as well, but it's not written to the Levites or the priests. It's written to the people. In many ways, Deuteronomy is an explanation of the Ten Commandments. In fact, it relists all the Ten Commandments in Deuteronomy. And, and my commentary here says, it is preparing the Jewish people to enter into the Promised Land. Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, Deuteronomy chapter five, 5 lists the Ten Commandments. Deut Deuteronomy chapter 6, uh, verse 4, uh, speaks of the Shema. You have probably heard of what the Shema is because I talk about it a lot. It's what I wear around my neck. Uh, I wear what's called a mezuzah. Many Jews would put a mezuzah on the doorpost of their house, and they would kiss it and kiss their hearts, saying, God, I will cherish this word in my heart. And it's Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, is the Shema. And the Shema says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It is the foundational scripture of Ju Judaism. In fact, most synagogues around the world, if not all, would sing the Shema every Sabbath. The very next verse after that, verse 5, says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Verse 6 of Deuteronomy chapter 5 then goes on to explain to you how to do that. You shall speak it to your children as you walk by the way. You shall talk at your table. It begins to explain how you will do it. Orthodox Jews or Hasidic Jews will take those literally. So have you ever seen an Orthodox Jew with a black block on their head? They have the scripture in there. If you'll notice, they wrap this leather band around their arm with uh, the scripture, and they they take it literally, and they have so many times they repeat those prayers to God. Back to Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is being tested by the Pharisees, Jews, uh, religious Jews. They ask him, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus quotes the scripture right after the Shema. They understood the scripture very, very well. And then he goes on to quote Leviticus chapter 19 that says, love your neighbor. Verse 40 in Matthew 22, it says, On these two commandments hang all of the law and the prophets. 
If you would honor these two, you would, you would honor the Ten Commandments and everything else of the Old Testament. To love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind is saying and meaning God gets everything. God gets your life. God gets your Monday. God gets your Tuesday. God gets your Saturdays. God gets your Sunday. He gets your money. He gets everything. We are stewards of God's money. With all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And the second one, you shall love the Lord, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Galatians chapter 5.14 mentions this scripture as well. Paul is writing uh, to the church of Galatia, and obviously there is believers are infighting. That never happens in the body of Christ, right? <laughs> Church people never fight with each other. We are always peace-loving, thrilled about each other. We never have any conflict, right? You've heard crazy stories where churches split because they couldn't figure out what color of the carpet they needed to vote on. True stories. My, I grew up at Second Baptist Church, Highlands, Texas. You know how Second Baptist Church, Highlands, Texas got started? Because the deacons had a fight at First Baptist Church, and we're not talking an argument. We're talking a fist fight. Crazy, huh? Crazy stuff. So, but you know, we're like, oh man, I wish we were like the New Testament. Well, let me tell you what the New Testament was like. Paul's writing a le letter to the Galatia church because they are fighting among each other. And Paul says, love your neighbor as yourself. In verse 14, he, he begins by saying the entire law is summed up in a single command, love your neighbor as yourself. I think God is saying something pretty important here. When we define doctrine, uh, I like to call it when we create doctrine, we create it based on a balance of scripture. One doctrine does I mean one scripture does not create doctrine. And so, uh, because you can take all kinds of scripture out of context and create all kinds of crazy doctrines, that's how cults get formed. And so, when we created doctrine on salvation, a doctrine on water baptism, a doctrine on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, a doctrine on loving our neighbor, it needs to come with a balance of scripture. Uh, how does the word speak about that, both Old Testament and New Testament? We can see a love thy neighbor. It is there in the Old Testament under the law, and it is there in the New Testament. There is a strong balance of scripture that speaks this word to us is important. After all, it's here on our mission statement, love God, love people, reach people, disciple people. Our great commissioner's right there. Go, as George said. It's right there. He said, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. I believe God is speaking strongly about loving our neighbor. The church should lead in love. We should be the kings of kindness. Perhaps our acts of love are the greatest tool the Holy Spirit will use to bring people to Jesus. This wasn't in my notes, but I was talking to Brian when we were in Belize, and we, were, we had been back in Mayamopan, and, and I, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back, but the people back in Mayamopan, they love me, especially the families that come to LifeNet. They they. They love me. They honor me. I'm, I'm Papa um, uh, in their life. And he said, what's the, <laughs> what's the recipe? I said, you know, I didn't go back there. Let me back up by saying, when mission teams go back to my Pan to the village, they leave and like, oh, they're, they're so happy and they're wonderful and they're, they're, they're every, life's all in order for them. Well, let me trust me, it's not. <laughs> There's some generational curses that got to be broken. There's a journey. What did I do? I didn't go back there and preach to them about all of their journey. They already felt condemned. I loved them. You know what that love allowed me to do? They asked me about those, that journey. 
Then I was able to speak into those specific areas. But they first had to learn that I loved them. Every week I would leave and I would go and I would just walk the village. I would go from house to house and I would greet. Just nothing special. Sometimes I would pray for them. Sometimes I would. Just loved them. Kindness. Could kindness be the greatest tool the Holy Spirit uses through you to touch the world around you. After all, 2 Corinthians chapter 5.20 says it this way, So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. So the Holy Spirit used you as a vessel of the Holy Spirit to touch the world around us. And perhaps the church's biggest tool is kindness. Question for us, how well are we utilizing that for the kingdom? So this leads us through our kindness series into our talking a little bit about our home campaign. Um, so let me introduce you. I've been talking a lot about it, um, but we haven't really got into the details. So here's some of the details. So uh, this week, in fact, this week coming up, one of the things that we're going to be doing, we're going to be sending a mailer, I think that's the next slide up, um, to all of the new homeowners that are moving into different homes within a two-mile radius of Go Church Katie and Go Church Tomball. So I believe about 200 are going out to um, Katie and about 230 new homeowners are going out to there. And that is, uh, I believe, going to be a great resource. And that's something we're doing in the office. But let me tell you, in order to do what we need to do, it takes you. It will take all of of us inviting people serving people uh, being a part of a task teams uh, area as I mentioned earlier we need more help with the ladies in the nursery and if you want to help out in that boy Robin would love you we need greeters and ushers and people working with the youth and sound and media all of those things it will take all of us turn to your neighbor and say that means you Now turn to your neighbor one more time and say, no, really, that means you. <laughs> All right, good job, guys. So home, home is an intentional outreach initiative of Go Church, meaning we want to be more invested, intentional in reaching the unchurched and unreached. What do I mean by both unchurched and unreached? Unreached people are exactly that. They're people in Katy, Texas that don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We want to be very intentional in leading them to Jesus, the Great Commission. We want to lead and disciple them. But there's a lot of unchurched people. All of you know people, maybe your own family family that once were, were uh, came to the Lord, they once were involved in church, but COVID has really messed things up, and they found out their pajamas, pajamas were nice to wear on Sunday morning and watch online, and so, so, so many people haven't connected past since the pandemic. It was hard in America to reach out to the unchurched before the pandemic. It is doubly hard today. We want to be very intentional in how we reach out to the unchurched. So you know people at Go Church that you haven't seen since the pandemic. We're going to reach out to them. We want to partner with you, those relationships that we have. We want to be a little bit bolder than we've been before, always loving, always kind, but we want to be far more intentional about reaching out to them. Listen, if they have found another church, we bless them. But if they are unchurched, we welcome them back. We welcome them home. Now hear this. You also know people that once went to such and such church down the road or such and such church. Now listen, if they're plugged in there, I'm not asking you to invite them. But if they haven't gone in those doors in a year, they are unchurched. <laughs> okay. And we want to know who those are from the office perspective, and we're going to partner with you. We're going to find ways. How can we bless them? How can we reach out to them? How can we love them? And this is really starting in August, going all through November, kind of our outreach season, finding ways to reach out to people. 
send us people that you know from Tomball, so Edgar and his team can reach out to them, people in Katy. So we'll be asking you to do that and call us, message us with people. Hey, I got an aunt that lives right down the road from me that hasn't been the church in two years. And so I've made a short list. I was at a graduation party a couple of months ago, and I met a lady and said, I've been wanting to visit Go, and we hadn't been to church in two years. I jotted her name down, and part of the campaign, we're going to be reaching out to her. And there's a, I have a short list of about seven or eight people that I personally will reach out. We are at Carolina and RJ Shower, and I met a guy, and he's like, yeah, Carolina's been inviting me. Well, we're going to partner with Carolina to invite this guy and get him to come and visit. But we will partner with you. You're going to play a big role in this. It's going to take more boldness, more focus, always loving, but a little bit bolder than we normally have been. We're going to set goals. So we're going to set goals. Remember when you were in youth group, you know, hey, kids, if, if we got 50 kids in youth, we're going to have a pizza party. Remember that? Anybody? Only me? Okay. So, uh, you know, I'd bring everybody because I wanted the pizza party. We're going to have some fun with our goals. So so let me tell you the goals of uh, Tom Ball and Katie. Tom Ball is a much smaller campus. So we want to, every month, we want them to average just two more people than they currently averaged the month before. So let, uh, And for Katie, we want to average five more people on an average attendance through the month of August than we had in July. So let's say July had 125. So our average at the end of August should be 130. And so if we've had 130 people in there uh, in, in August, then we'll throw a, a breakfast taco party on Sunday morning on September 1st. And so, and then September will come with a new goal. It'll be five more from August. And if we do that, we're thinking of like iced coffee. Um, that doesn't appeal to me, but it appeals to y'all. And so uh, uh, iced coffee, a little bit more of a display than what we've done before. And we're just going to have some fun with it. We're going to celebrate our victories. And uh, we're going to be very intentional on reaching out to people. Which leads us to a lot of opportunities to invite people. One is August 21st, which we've already talked about, our cluster party. 50s theme. Nobody will be able to recognize anybody else because they'll all be in their 50s outfit. We're going to celebrate our nine grow teams that will birthing back up uh, right after August. One of them just asked me today, can we go ahead and get started early? I'm like, yeah, that'd be great. That'd be awesome. And so our group's going to be reconvening um, right after August 31st. Uh, be our guest. August 2nd is our Be Our Guest Sunday. I believe there's a slide for it. Next one. B-O-G. There it is. Be Our Guest. That is a, a unreached uh, Sunday morning. Our, our goal is to preach the gospel and see people make a decision for Jesus Christ. RJ, our youth pastor, was saved at a B-O-G Sunday morning because someone invited him to church and he heard the gospel for the very first time and he made a decision. So BOG October 2nd is our focus Sunday. October 16th is family fun day. That's when we do church out in the park where both campuses come together. It is a great time. We should have a slide for that as well. There it is, Family Fun Day. Um, Community of Cultures is coming up uh, November 6th when we celebrate our cultural diversity as a church. What a great, fun Sunday we do then. And then November 20th is Blessed Day or AKA Pie Day. We give every family two pies. We ask you to go out and bless somebody and keep one for Thanksgiving. Go out and bless somebody. And it's just a great, great Sunday. Let me tell you about the pandemic. <laughs> Churches shut down during the pandemic. There were five four-square churches in Katy, Texas before the pandemic. There are two today. And it's not just our denomination. I know of other churches merged with other um, partnering churches. I know churches that shut down. Um, it was crazy. We've actually done well this year. We've grown by 20%. That's the good news. But let me tell you, God has far more work to be done in us and through us. This is our goal. We want by the end of the year to average 200 people between our Tom Ball and Katy campus. I think that's pretty achievable. I think our average right now is about 170. And you say, 30 people, that's a piece of cake. Trust me, it's not. <laughs> when you classify the average attendance. And so um, that's growth. 
and that's our goal, and we'll be very intentional on doing it. Expanding the kingdom of God is our mandate to go and make disciples. As I said, it's on our wall, but let me tell you a practical reason. We want to be a good steward of God's money. Renting this place from somebody else is not being a great steward of God's money. Owning our own building and utilizing that building for much more than we could do here is a better steward than just renting a place that we've spent $200,000 to move in here, and one day we will give it all back to them, uh, and we will walk away losing roughly all of that money. We want to buy our own land. Let me tell you what land cost. Three acres right down the road literally is $1.2 million. To build a building right now, roughly a 300-seat auditorium, this holds 175, so doubling this facility um, would cost us about $5 million to do it. When Don and I built Life Church 15 years ago, it cost us $1.4 or $1.5 million, I think it was. This man did most of it, uh, contracting everybody. If we would have did a turnkey, hired a company to do it, it would have been much more, about 400000 more. But it's going to cost us some money. You know what a mortgage payment is? This is beyond my sermon, I'm sorry. For a $5 million facility, but a $30,000 mortgage a month. We pay six here. And with this, we have a bargain. Most storefronts around that I am aware of are paying about ten to twelve thousand dollars a month. That would be hard on us to do. Why do we need to grow? We want to buy land. We want to build, and we want to be good stewards of God's money. We can't do all of that with 140 people. Um, this is going to sound really boastful. I hesitate to even say. It. I believe God's gift, my sweet spot is three to 400 people. We're large enough to have the money to do what we need to do for ministry, and we're small enough to still know everybody. And that's why we have a plan to birth, uh, continue to see Tomball grow, and eventually uh, birth a, a, a group in Brookshire, Texas. And so if we're running 300 and 400 in the Katy campus, I'm as happy as can be. But I believe my gift mix, and I believe my past tenure as planning churches, I think we can get the 300 people. I think we're capable of doing that. We need to be intentional on doing that. I get it. What I tell everybody about Go Church, y'all are awesome. But it's been the hardest church plant, one, because I'm getting older, <laughs> and secondly, because coming out of the pandemic, coming into the pandemic, only being a year-old church and coming out of the pandemic and trying to get people back in church has been a journey. We have a good team. The team I took uh, just to Belize, they were phenomenal. We have a great team of people that call Go Church home. Let us partner together to see this happen. This season over the next five months is very, very important. Galatians chapter 6, 9 says this. And let us not grow weary while doing good. For in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. God still has a lot for us to do in 2022. So let me get back to kindness. I'm about to close it up. Kindness, so let's practice. Romans chapter 5, I'm going to read this scripture in three different translations. says it this way. Let each of us, and I believe it's up there. Out of the New King James, it says, Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. The Amplified puts it this way. Let each one of us make it a practice. I like that. To please his neighbor for his good, to build him up spiritually. And the God's Word translation puts it this way. We should all be concerned about our neighbor and the good things that will build his faith. So how do we birth kindness toward our neighbor and allow the Holy Spirit to use us? So our ushers, here are the boxes. Sean, would you come up and get these for, for them? 
they're, they're right there. If everybody would take two, you can take three of them if you want. Uh, we'll be using them um, in the weeks to come. We'll use them next week as well. So what I want you to do, I want you to take a couple of these for your neighbors. If you want to bless another neighbor, you can. Um, on one set, it says needs prayer. It has our phone number, encouraging people to text them, uh, text our phone number if they want to reach out for prayer. But on the back, it's blank. So I want you to do something special for your neighbor. Bake them cookies if you want. Uh, buy them a watermelon if you want. Uh, a basket of apples. I don't know what you want to do. Uh, pray, Lord, how can I bless my neighbor? Then I want you to go over to your neighbor and knock on the door. And hey, Don. Uh, hey, and you can even share what happened. Hey, we've been doing a kindness series, and this week's on our neighbor, and so I just wanted to bless my neighbor. I have the best neighbors in the world, and so I just wanted to bless them. Here's a basket of apples, and here's just a simple card that says something like, so glad you're my neighbor, and just planting a seed. Is this a hard gospel presentation where we're leading them to Jesus right there on the doorsteps? No, it just plants the seed. It just loves people right where they are, so they begin to ask us why, and when they ask us why, we can share the gospel with them. And then, please, message me this week. Tell me what happened. How did it go? Let me conclude with this. 1 Peter chapter 4, 8. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Kindness is an act of love. Can we be the kings of kindness for our community? Because kindness is contagious. What I'm asking you to do by those, I'm asking you to be intentional. We could randomly do things, and that's great, but I'm asking you to be intentional and saying, God, how can I serve my neighbor? I have, anytime we do a function here, my neighbors are pretty ter uh, tired of me. I invite them all, and, you know, I knock on the door. Hey, Devin, yeah, we're going to have a grand opening. You ought to come, and, you know, and he says, hey, yeah, we'll see, and, you know, uh, and so, and I've just tried to love on them and serve them in different ways, and I have a next cross the street neighbor that's a mechanic and just a good guy. He's done some work recently on my vehicle, and I've invited him before, but when he was doing work on my car, you know, I didn't bring it up, you know, he's, he's serving me. I didn't, it obviously hasn't come in, in a, uh, ever before, and he asked me, he said, hey, when's your service? Because me and my wife's talking about visiting sometime soon. I've planted probably 10 or 15 seeds there. Haven't tried to be too heavy-handed. Just try to love on him. Try to be true and honest. And he's working on my car. Try to do right, right by him. I don't know if he'll ever come here. He may go somewhere else. But I planted a seed. Would you stand with me this morning? If you agree with me and says, I will intentionally serve my neighbor this week. Would you raise your hand? I'll do it. Father, we, you see all those hands. Father, would you remind them tomorrow, this afternoon, would you speak to them about specific ways they can care for their neighbor? God, may we plant seeds this week. May we sow kindness this week. May we show love this week. May our neighbors know where to go when they're hurting. They know we're lovers of Jesus, God. Thank you for that, God. When our leaders begin to make their way up, man, if you're here and maybe you're far away from Jesus and you need ministry, would you come? Maybe you're sick in body and you're need a touch from Jesus, man, we want you to come. Maybe you're hurting some in some area of your life, struggling, and you just need some guidance.
Thank you.